Hello and welcome to the what to look for in a gym tier list. I have recently been shopping for a gym and so this is what you might want to look for if you are also doing the same. So there are five tiers. Starting at the bottom we have not necessary, rarely relevant, somewhat significant, very vital, and extremely essential. So th those are pretty self-explanatory. Let's jump right into it. The first one is going to be rings. Now rings are excellent for hypertrophy, but if your gym doesn't have them, you can just buy them yourself and bring them to the gym. So whether or not your gym has those isn't really a consideration. Same thing with bands. They're very, very portable. They're very, very convenient. If you go to the gym and they don't have bands, not a big deal. All right, getting into tier four. That was quick, a pretty small tier number five on this one. Tier number four, first one, child care. Now this is something that it might be extremely important if you have kids, but if you don't, it won't matter at all. So I kind of split the difference, kinda, and put it at tier number four. Next up, music. Now this certainly can help, and it's nice not to have to listen to Chinese power ballads or Justin Bieber. But at the end of the day, you can use your own music, so I don't think this is all that big of a consideration. Next up, whether they have a pool or a sauna. Now, some high-end gyms might have these. Personally, I don't think it's that big of a draw. It doesn't have that much appeal. I would rather put my stock in other stuff higher up the list. But if you really like swimming, I guess this is going to matter. Or if you really like saunaing. Next up, good lighting. Now, as someone in the fitness industry, this is kind of relevant. If you want to take, you know, those, those good pictures where you have the perfect down lighting and it makes you look like you're 20 pounds of fat lighter and 20 pounds of muscle bigger. Yeah, I guess that's a consideration. I guess if you're a, 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 normal, a normal person, a, a, a plebeian, then yeah, this might matter as well. Um, but I would say this is not the biggest consideration. Next up... Hot chicks, or hot dudes, whatever you're into, but does it have attractive people? Now, I am happily married, so this doesn't really matter at all. Nope, not even a little bit. Yep, nope. I, I'm blind to that kind of stuff now that I'm married. All my, all my instincts just gone out the window. Yep, no impact at all. But I recognize, especially for younger people, this might be a bit of consideration. So uh, when you go to the gym and you're, you're shopping around, you know, just have a look. Next up, if the gym has classes, for me, I this doesn't matter at all. Uh, in fact, it might actually be a little bit of a negative because I think gyms that have classes are usually targeting beginners more, and I'm usually interested in not beginner stuff. Uh, but maybe if you're a beginner, if you don't want to think too much, you just want to follow along, uh, I think looking at the class schedule might be a useful thing. All right, getting into the somewhat significant tier, clean. Is the gym clean? Does it have cleanliness? Now, you would think this would be something that every gym would have. Unfortunately, that is absolutely not the case. If your gym is just grungy and disgusting, that is absolutely a factor. And I've certainly been to gyms where I walked in and then I walked out because it was that bad size. So how big is it? Okay, if it's if it's quite spacious, if there's a lot of room to move around, that is usually a good thing. If it's a little bit a little bit cramped, it's uh, you know, you're getting in the way of other people, you got to sort of bend your way around the machines and stuff like that, probably not a great fit. But it can be too big. Mind you, it it can absolutely be too big where, you know, you try to superset two machines and you have to walk up three floors in order to do that. So you want a happy middle ground, right? Like not too small, not too big, just sort of right, right, just, just perfect. Next up, specialty bars. So this might be a safety squat bar, this might be a cambered bar, this might be a football bar. Any of those things you see power lifters using, uh, I think this is certainly useful. Not quite as essential as things higher up on the list, but it's a nice perk, and I do think this is 
a good indication that the gym is a little bit more hardcore. I go into all of these tier lists, every video that I make, with the assumption that you care about results. Okay, so when someone was like, well, I just want to get 14 inch arms. That's fine. It's a good goal. You know, everyone needs to get a little bit toned, I guess. But that's not something I think about when I'm making videos. Okay, I'm assuming you have at least somewhat ambitious goals. Next up, the timing or the hours. So if your gym is only open, you know, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. or something, and you work a nine to five job, eh, you're gonna have trouble scheduling that in. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 24-7, 24 hours a day gym, but you need to be able to actually go. Kind of, kind of obvious, right? Next up, personal trainers and staff. Uh, I think this is going to be quite useful for beginners. If you can find a good PT, that can absolutely help a ton. That might take years off of your learning curve if they are a good teacher and if they are actually one of the few PTs who are trying to teach you and educate you and give you the tools to be able to train yourself later. Unfortunately, a lot of PTs, they kind of treat their clients like mushrooms. They feed them shit and keep them in the dark, so they have to rely on the PT. Um, but if you can find a good PT, that is absolutely a factor. Next up, equipment, and there are a few specific machines that I have on this tier. First, the adductor abductor machine. The technical name is the good girl bad girl machine, uh, I believe. This is something that is going to be tough to replicate with free weights. You can do what I think is called a Copenhagen plank. Al Kankiri has done these before, where you have your foot, your top foot on the side of a bench, and then you are essentially pushing downward, activating the adductors. I think this is an okay replacement, but I think most people would prefer just to use a machine. It's also tough to do the abduction things. I guess you could do a clamshell or something, but overall I would say this is something that is kind of hard to replace. Machine rows, also excellent. Yes, you can do barbell rows. Yes, you can do dumbbell rows, but I think having a, a machine is very, very useful. Partly because it takes stress and load off of the lower back. You're not using your hips, it takes that out of it, uh, or you're not twisting as much. And so it also will change the strength curve a lot of the time. So it's more challenging in the lengthened position and it deloads a little bit in the contracted position where you're naturally a little bit weaker. And so that is a nice feature there. Uh, machine chest press is quite nice. With dumbbells, yes, you can converge, but there's really no loading, no tension in that top position. And then with barbells, you can't converge at all. So I think having... Whatever brand it is, could be Hammer Strength, could be Techno Gym or whatever, having a machine chest press is certainly useful. I also think having a pendulum squat or a hack squat or a leverage squat, some kind of squat pattern that takes the lower back out of it is very, very useful. Again, you can build big legs just through front squats, just through high bar back squats, just through low bar back squats, just through split squats, lunges, you know, the very, very basic movements. But I do think there is a ton of value here. A leg press, also quite useful. Slightly different movement pattern, but I do think having a little bit of variation and variety here is quite useful. If you're going to a gym and they only have barbells and dumbbells, uh, to me that is definitely not a great sign. Fine. I'll do it myself. Hamstring curls and leg extensions are also very, very useful. You can replicate hamstring curls with a dumbbell by lying on a bench or hanging from a pull-up bar and just, you know, using your feet to lift a dumbbell. That is doable. You can do Nordic hamstring curls. So if you have a home gym, yes, you can still replicate the hamstring curling motion. But I think in terms of loading and convenience and tracking, having a machine is very, very useful. For leg extensions, you can do a sissy squat as well if you want some kind of rectus femoris movement. But again, leg extensions, very convenient, and you get to sit down. All right, getting into tier two. How busy is the gym? How crowded is the gym? 
how many other motherfuckers are there in the gym while you are there. This is definitely a consideration. This is part of the reason I go to the gym in the early afternoon where there is almost no one there. For me, I'm not a particularly social person. And so when I go to the gym and I see absolutely fucking no other people, oh, glorious. Especially typically when I program, I will alternate push and pull movements. So if I'm doing a curl and then an extension, I'll do a curl, then an extension, then a curl, then an extension, or I'll do a bench press and then a pull up, a bench press and a pull up, I'll alternate back and forth. And I don't like having to wait for other people. Next up, how heavy the dumbbells are. Now, if you live in the States or in England or in Europe or wherever, you might think like, why is this consideration? All the gyms always have super heavy dumbbells. Well, in a lot of other countries, you'll go into a gym and the heaviest dumbbells will be 30 kilos or even 25 kilos. It's essentially like a hotel gym that is still as expensive or more expensive than a typical Western gym. So... Typically, in a lot of gyms here in China, the dumbbells will go up to 30 kilos or 66 pounds. And so once you get reasonably strong, you can't really do dumbbell bench presses. You can't really do dumbbell overhead presses. You can't do dumbbell rows. Like a lot of these compound movements just aren't really viable. And so the gym that I go to now, I walked in, it had 50 kilo dumbbells and I'm like, 110 pounds. Oh, mm, wonderful. I also do think it's kind of a representation of who is going to be going to that gym. If the gym caps out at 20 kilo, 44 pound dumbbells, the people who go there are probably not going to be all that serious about it. And that's fine if you're not that serious about it, but if you are, it's kind of a problem. Next up, back extensions. This machine gets its own little picture in the thing because it is that important. Um, especially recently, I've been dealing with this QL injury for the past almost a year, and so having a back extension, I find to be very, very useful. If I went into a gym and there was no back extension, I would not stay at that gym. Next up, big dudes. So if you go into the gym and you're the biggest dude there by a while, by a ways, and everyone else is like, damn, they make people like this? Normie scum. Is that really going to be a great place for you to progress? Probably not. You don't want to be the biggest guy in your gym. You know, I've heard it said that if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. If you're the biggest guy in the gym, you're in the wrong gym. And so I I, I like to see some big guys in the gym. I, I like my dudes with a, a bit of meat on them. If I go to the gym and I see a couple guys... And one is inclined bench pressing, two and a half plates over here, then a few other dudes over there. Oh, one guy's deadlifting five plates, and then here's another guy about to about to give himself a hernia in squats. Fantastic. Next up, price. I do think this is a consideration. Some people are like, oh, money doesn't matter. Like, oh, no. it does matter, okay? Like, if a gym is weirdly overpriced and another one is very similar and a lot cheaper, everything else being equal... Go for the cheaper option. Duh. Like, it is a consideration, I guess, unless you're a billionaire or a millionaire or something. But I would say for most people, yeah, this is absolutely a factor. Getting into tier one, first one is atmosphere. So I touched on this a little bit before. You want the atmosphere to match your goals. Okay, so if you're a beginner, you have small goals, you're not that hardcore, don't go to a hardcore gym. Okay, if you walk into the gym and you feel like super intimidated you, you feel like wow like this is this is a little bit much for me maybe don't go there maybe, maybe go to a planet fitness maybe go to some other you know just typical commercial gym nothing wrong with that at all but if you are a little bit more hardcore if you are a little bit more driven your goals are a little bit higher then don't go to a planet fitness don't go to a gym that is catering to people who are not you I mean, how many times have you heard or seen online, oh, don't use chalk, don't deadlift, stop banging your deadlifts, oh, you're dropping the weight, oh, you're making noise, oh, you're grunting, oh, your face is turning red, like, oh, you're making any kind of noise. If I hear any of that, I'm out. There's something about you that I'm not believing. Ooh. 
time. You're no. hopping and weaving a lot, I feel, and it's making me more nervous as I listen. I'm definitely out. Next up, power rack, bars, and plates. Now you would think this is the absolute basics, like just the very, very simplest stuff that every gym, of course, is gonna have. Not the case. My old gym, the one outdoors that I filmed, you know, everything in the past two years, they didn't have a power rack when I first showed up. And they're like, I'm like, uh, so you gonna get this? And they're like, yeah, 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 it's on the way. And it took, you know, a month or two. And so I was doing, you know, Smith machine squats, which is, which is okay. And I actually ended up, because I wanted to do real squats, right? I actually ended up setting up a bar between an incline bench press and a normal bench press, having to like squat under it. And because the incline is higher, I had to like go not completely straight with the bar. This is not a social media stunt. This is not something for attention. I know it looks like that. This is just something I had to do if I wanted to squat because the gym didn't have a power rack. Next up, convenience and location. The closer, the better, especially if adherence is an issue. Come on, bro. You and I both know that if you have to drive 30 minutes to the optimal gym, it's just not going to happen, okay? After a long day at work, you're tired, the thought of driving an hour total is going to put you off and you're just not going to end up going. And it might even be worth calculating out the time that you might save, right? I mean, if you... If one is five minutes closer, that means you're saving 10 minutes each time. And if you're going 300 times per year, you're going to save a lot of time and that might be worth paying a little bit more. Now, it's not completely wasted time, especially if you're walking, you're getting in steps, maybe you're listening to a podcast or something. But I do think that convenience is absolutely a consideration. Finally, the most important consideration, drum roll, please. I would say more important than price, more important than convenience, more important than a power rack or dumbbells that actually challenge you is do they have a lunk alarm? We can't have people trying to put effort into their training and, and make progress, that kind of thing. We need to stop these people and that's why you need to make sure that your gym has a lunk alarm. All right, that's all for this video. For more about the nuances and intricacies of training, definitely check out my books. They will help you a lot in your journey. And without any exaggeration, they could very well save you years of frustration. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.